Hi guys, how are you all doing? Hope all of you are doing well and all of you are safe with your families at home. Well, this year is the new and updated Audi Q5. Now, officially, this car takes on the likes of the Mercedes GLC as well as the BMW X3. Uh, but the big difference is that this one is only available with the diesel engine. The, no, it's only available with the petrol. Now, the diesel is out. It has been out for the last 18 months and that's why Audi had stopped selling this car because they were not selling it with the diesel. Now, in terms of the looks, it's uh, got a refreshed look uh, up ahead. So, you get uh, the same kind of grille as you have been getting on Audi cars, but it's much bigger than before, more prominent. You get the same uh, chrome surrounds around it. And, of course, you get uh, very nice and very sharp looking lamps over here. The front uh, headlamps are, you know, they've got multiple elements in them. And, of course, even projectors for the fog lamps, the side profile is typical Audi, very square and boxy design. Uh, but the good point is that you get nice and chunky wheels. And of course, this is running on continental tires uh, on 19 inch wheels. And uh, that gives it a very nice personality. It looks like it's, uh, you know, set for purpose. So that is something which is nice about the car. And as I said, a lot of uh, chrome elements on the side rails and of course over here as well around the surround for the mirrors at the back. So home detailing all around. Of course, this is a black colored car. So there's a little bit of dust on it because that's uh, what happens when you are standing in sand. And if you come to the back end of the car, again, you see typical Audi design, flashy lamps at the back, but it's not uh, overstated. It's understated in terms of looks. And of course, again, a lot of chrome. as you might be aware by now, is uh, the online expert in terms of spare parts. If you want a spare part for your vehicle, they have it in their list. They have the most extensive spare parts catalog, right? From the most affordable small car to the top of the line luxury car, you name the car, and they have the spare parts for it. And the best point is that they have the spare parts from a host of different component makers and different price uh, segments for the same spare parts. So if you want to buy a cheaper part from a different maker or a more expensive part from a different component maker, they have the option for you. Well, so guys, let's quickly talk about the quality of the Audi Q5 because the quality levels inside this car are generally very good. Uh, all the quality levels are good. The top of the dashboard, the small switches over here, the lower part of the center console, even the rocker for the volume, which is a place where a lot of, uh, you know, manufacturers cut cost. It is all high in quality, so no complaints over there. USB charging point over here and, of course, a cigarette lighter as well. Uh, and a couple of places here where you can keep your odds and ends like your cell phone maybe or maybe some coins or maybe some cards and of course a huge box over here where you can keep a lot of other paraphernalia at the moment we've kept these tissues as well as my wallet and of course while it's charging for a mobile phone but that's not all you also get three zone climate control a uh, brilliant bang and olufsen sound system uh, with multiple speaker setup one of the best in the business quattro all-wheel drive and of course uh, the drive select where you can change the overall tuning of the engine and the gearbox and of course, uh, traction control assistance for this uh, parking and a host of other features over here and also electric handbrake as well as auto hold function. And as I mentioned earlier, the switch quality really is very good. Just listen to this. This is the most satisfying click you'll ever hear. And uh, apart from this, what I really like about this car is the MMI digital cockpit. It really does look very fancy, very good. Uh, let me just take the camera from my camera person and show it to you now. Uh, you can change the entire look and feel of this uh, gauge over here. So maybe if you don't want to see the maps, you can do this. You can check out the stereo. You can check out how you're driving or you can simply make the main dials smaller and check out the other information. And uh, even the maps load up and eat up the entire screen. So you don't have to take your eyes off the road and uh, check out the main screen because over here you can do everything. The only bit of negative is that the cruise control setting is oddly placed here behind the steering wheel and the lower part that's something which is a little difficult to access for initial users, but uh, I think once you get the hang of it, it is quite okay. And of course, you also get pal shifters behind the steering wheel. And uh, one nice feature is this, that when you open this uh, shade, the light also pops out. What's also nice is the location we're shooting at today. What do you think of the location? What do you think of this car? I think that it has the best interiors on offer in this segment for sheer quality levels, for sheer overall appeal, and for the sheer positive vibe. Anyways, now let's jump in the back seat and see how good that really is.
Well, so if you're someone who's always in the back seat, you're a chauffeur-driven owner, then you'll really appreciate the back seat experience inside the Audi Q5. Now, as you can see, not only do you get good amount of knee room, but headroom also is more than sufficient. And my height for reference is 5'10". So if you're 5'10", your chauffeur's also 5'10", then you'll have plenty of place. Even 5'11", or maybe even 6", you'll be more than happy in these seats. You also get this armrest. And of course, uh, you get a couple of beverage uh, holders over here, so you can keep that beverage for that long distance journey. But if you even pack it up and you actually want to use it as a three seat at the back, you can do it. There's a huge uh, hump in the floor panel, but the uh, footwells are decent in terms of space. So whoever's sitting here has decent place to, uh, you know, accommodate his feet. So it shouldn't be too much of a stretch. And uh, the best point is that uh, the seat comfort is quite good and the knee and hip angle also is almost at 90 degrees, not exactly 90, but it is quite comfortable. So you sit up nice and upright and the backrest angle also is quite good. So all you do is just pull out this uh, headrest, hold on to the grab rail, belt up your seat and uh, you know, just tell your driver to drive as far as he wants to and head up to those hills for that long weekend getaway because uh, it really is a fantastic car. The ride comfort is good, we'll get to that in a bit. Ride comfort is good, seat comfort is good and the ambience inside the car is very positive. It does feel like a luxury SUV and, uh, you know, it just feels like a positive place to be in. Anyways, now let's quickly show you the boot and then we'll get to the driving bits. Well, so let's quickly talk about the boot of this car because a boot on a luxury car is very important for those airport transfers for your mother-in-law. Now, in terms of the space, as you can see, it's a nice, deep and spacious boot. It's a wide boot as well. So we've loaded three very small bags at the moment, but I can tell you that it can easily accommodate uh, two large pieces of suitcase as well as one you know, maybe two smaller ones. So it is a very huge boot. Uh, also, the good point is there's no loading sill. I mean, there's a minimum one, but uh, you can easily ignore it. And uh, this area isn't very high up from the ground. So you can easily load those big bags and those heavy boxes without any fuss whatsoever. And of course, once you've loaded all of them up, you can easily do this uh, shelf or this blind and uh, hide away all those expensive items which your in-laws got for you when they came for that long trip because uh, that's something which is very important and uh, it should be in a way from prying eyes. Anyways guys, it's a huge boot, very spacious boot, double thumbs up to the Audi Q5's boot. And before I forget, it's a power tailgate so you don't have to do any kind of exercise. Of course, you need to press the right button to close it. Now let's jump inside the car, drive it around and then tell you all about the driving bits of the Q5 and then give you a summary report. <music> Well, so uh, in this video, we've already seen that this car is good to sit in. It's good to look at and it comes loaded with a lot of features. Uh, of course, some of the features include eight airbags. It includes this 10-inch touchscreen. And of course, it also includes uh, the multiple driving modes. But how is it to drive? And I have good news for you that in the driving department also, it is quite good. Now, let's start off with the spec sheet first. You get a two-liter TFSI petrol engine and it makes about 249 bhp and about 370 mm of torque, which are very good figures from this size engine. You also get a seven-speed S-Tronic automatic gearbox, which you can use using these flappy pedals behind the steering wheel. And uh, you also, of course, get the Quattro four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive system. So it is uh, quite a good car in all uh, the features list as well as the power output. Now, uh, the proof of the pudding, of course, is in eating it. And I have to say that in terms of the driving bits, it is quite a nice car. It's a very refined car. And Audi engineers have uh, focused completely on the comfort of this car, and this car is a uh, very comfortable car. It really does err on the side of comfort. So if you are someone who drives a lot within the city or if you are someone who always wants to be on the highway and sit in the back seat, you'll be very happy in this car. The controls are light. The steering wheel especially is quite light. And even when you put it in dynamic mode, the steering wheel does offer a little more weight. It is quite communicative, but it never feels tiresome or never feels overtly heavy. You start feeling tired at the end of a long day. So that's something nice. Uh, visibility is also very good. But the gem of the piece is definitely the engine. Uh, it's a refined engine, it's a creamy engine, and it just loves to rev. You can rev it up all the way to 7,000 RPM and it just goes without any issues whatsoever. If you put it in dynamic mode, of course, it becomes more aggressive. The engine and the gearbox, you know, uh, become a little more muscled up. They offer you much more aggressive responses and uh, acceleration also is quite good. Audi, of course, claimed an acceleration figure of uh, just a shade under seven seconds for zero to 100, which is quite good for this size and shape of car. What they also claim is good is the fuel efficiency and uh, they offer you a fuel efficiency claim figure of about 17 KPL. And uh, I think that uh, if it doesn't deliver 17, it should definitely deliver around 10 or 15% lower than that on a regular basis with the AC on. So uh, these figures are 
quite good once again and you should expect around 13 or 14 kpl in a mixed cycle of highway as well as city usage uh, the steering wheel though and the overall uh, chassis isn't as sharp maybe as a bmw x3 is so the x3 still has that advantage as a sheer driver's car but this one isn't a slouch you can still have some fun with it uh, when you push it in corners the grip from the tires is good the body roll is always under control and the braking also is generous and pretty good so you do get lots of confidence in all those departments but yes as i said but as i said if you are a keen driver you just buy your car for the sheer thrill of driving then definitely uh, the x3 has a slight advantage but that's about it in terms of the comfort this one clearly has a better ride comfort overall Well, so overall, the Audi Q5 comes across as a very good all-round package. It comes as a very refined and a very flexible petrol engine. It also offers you the best ride quality. Yes, the ride quality really is exemplary on this car. And yes, some might say that it's not as exciting to drive as some of its rivals, but that's quite okay because buyers in this segment want a car which they can drive to work every day and not a car they want for the racetrack. So in that sense, this is a very well-focused car in terms of the comfort as well as the luxury. And overall, what I'm trying to say is that if you're in the market for a mid-size luxury SUV, then the new Q5 should definitely be on the top of your shortlist. Spy for now, and thanks so much for watching.